Hi, I'm William Sheckle from the Chambers Rescue Channel, and today I want to talk to you about how to set up a Chambers Model B. So we're looking at a 1947 Model B right now, and there are a few things that let us know right away that we're looking at a Model B and not, a, and not an A, and not a C, and not a BZ. The first thing is that this has a single front panel. That front panel's all one piece and looks like it. On a Model A, there is a front panel for the pantry side and another panel for the oven side. You see the line between them. Also, a Model A has chrome and enamel thumb latches with oven, broiler, back front, so on, in the, uh, written in them in chrome, whereas the Model B has them printed right above the thumb latches. The big difference between the front of a Model B and a Model C is the fact that it has one single dial over the pantry door. This is a thermostat dial. The Model C has two, one for the thermostat, one for the timer. The Model A has one in that same place. And the reason we know this is a 1947 or very early 1948 Model B is because of the white plastic thermostat dial. Prior to 1947, Chambers used a different thermostat that had a, a, a chrome and enamel dial that fit it. With the new, and my favorite by far, thermostat, the Robert Shaw 2200S, they changed the dial to this white plastic with an aluminum insert that says either Robert Shaw or Chambers. I believe personally that all the ones that say Chambers came in in 1948, but if somebody's got data showing one on from 1947, I'd be happy to update that information. But I just noticed this on all the stoves I've worked on. In 1948, they all say Chambers. 1947, so far, they all say Robert Shaw on them. I'm probably the only one who cares about that. <laughs> the other thing that um, lets us know that this is a Model B are the ridges on the top. So notice right here, going from front to back, are these ridges. They're a holdover from an older style of cooking when you had very large pots and pans. You see these on 1920s stoves and earlier all the time. And this was put in as an accommodation like, of, oh, hey, you probably still had all your old cookware, made it easier to slide that big pot or that big pan right off the, uh, right off the burners. This was there as, as support for you. So Model B, single front panel, one dial, printing here, ridges on the top. The Model BZ is different in, in several small ways. Uh, most importantly, it has a smooth top and it has a pilot cover right here. All Model BZs were made in 1948 and they were sold until the Model C came out sometime in 1950. So with that, now let's take a look at our stovetop and our burners. I should also point out that mo the Model B came with a cover a friend of mine with a Model BZ uh, down in Georgia calls them mother-in-law covers, which I just think is hilarious uh, because it says everything about the state of the woman who would be using this in the 40s that she was going to felt like she was going to be criticized. So the mother-in-law was coming, so she'd just cover up whatever mess was there and wait until the mother-in-law left to lift it up and deal with it later. You'll also see bees that have a high backsplash or like this one just have this little bit of a fin there were two different backsplashes that came with the bee most people are familiar with the high one that had a light on either side there's also one that looks more like an art deco pyramid that's a holdover from the model a but there are backsplash uh, versions and versions without a backsplash just like there are versions with black enamel tops and chrome tops You'll also see black handles and chrome handles, but you'll always see the single front panel, the single dial, and, and more often than not, you'll see the ridges on the top. What you'll also see on all Model Bs, except for the BZ, I'm going to do a separate video on the BZ. I'm working on two of them right now, and they should be finished soon, so stay tuned for a Model BZ video. You'll notice on the stovetop that we have three different burner grates. So there is the simmer ring, which holds the heat. So if you're trying to simmer food and are going to be cooking it for a long time, this burner grate holds the heat better. 
one more aspect of chambers heat retention. This was your fast burner for, uh, it, you know, has no obstruction between the flame and the pot. So this is where you'd put your kettle. And this tab here was thought of as extra support for smaller pots that you would have. So normal Model B has these three different burner grates. And the drip rings are either a deep dish like this or a shallow dish, which is about half as high. If you read the manual or you go online, you'll see that it used to be that one was only for natural gas and one was only for propane. And there is a really long story about why that probably only fascinates me and maybe like three other people. But I'm not going to turn this into a two hour long lecture on propane and natural gas and stoichiometry and everything else. So suffice to say, it is no longer important. It doesn't matter which burner drip ring you have or which burner type. So you'll also see in those same conversations that there are two types of burners for the Model B. They all have this metal, this basic shape, but some look like this, while others, forgive me for showing you a terribly unrestored <laughs> burner, but this just came off the stove and happened to be right by this when I set up the video. So notice these spindles or these chimneys here. Again, these are the same exact burner. This has, still has the spindles. This does not. If you have shallow drip pans, you'll have shallow brackets, and these will not fit. If you have uh, deep brackets and deep drip pans, either will fit. But they make no difference to the actual performance of your stove as long as they fit in general. So with that, let me move the camera so that you can see how to actually put one of these in. Okay, so now let's put the burner on. This hole is where the orifice cap goes. And we see the orifice cap, this piece of brass right down here. So in order to put it on, we're just gonna slide that hole around that cap. And then before we place the, the burner down, we're gonna lift up the flash tube. Then you put the burner down so that the, the tabs that stick out of either side of it nest firmly at the bottom of your brackets. And then we put the flash tube down. Now, if the flash tube doesn't go right in the hole on your burner, this just slides out. You have to twist it a little and you can pull it and adjust it and get it to be just at the right angle and the right length. But I can't tell you how often I get a house call where people will say, oh, my burner doesn't, uh, my burner doesn't ignite. And the reason I show up and it's like that. It's almost there, but it's not all the way there. All you have to do is move that over. Make sure that the, the, the little nib at the tip of the flash tube seated right in that hole, and that'll make sure that your burner ignites right away. Now let's look at the thermo well. Notice there are three things in here to look at. There are these two brackets that fit the burner. Notice the burner has these two tabs. These tabs fit right in those holes as we pass it through the front of the thermo well and around the, the pilot. It's often easiest to light the pilot before you put the burner in, but I do advise that you wear oven mitts or something else when putting it in because you are now igniting flame. It's going to get warm if you mess around in there. So we just light our pilot. I'll show you how to adjust that pilot to be the right height in just a minute. So with the pilot lit, we're going to slide the thermo well burner through the opening in the front, around the orifice cap, which I'm just about to show you, and so that it is seated firmly in these two tabs. So notice how the pilot is now covered up by the shield of the thermo well burner. That's why you wanna light that first. Just obviously take any precautions to keep your hands safe and don't play around with the fire. But if you just slide it in quickly and easily, it should go right in. Especially if you're holding it up here, that's not gonna get hot. If you're unsure, put it in, and then afterwards, turn on the gas and light that pilot. So when you're done, put down the burner grate. And we're gonna leave that like, not, uh, like that right now, uncovered because we still want to calibrate the flames on this stove. But before we do that, we wanna make sure that it's seated properly. So we're gonna take a look inside the pantry at the thermo well burner. Okay, if we look right here, you can just see that burner 
is right around that orifice cap, just like on the stovetop burners. That's seated nice and properly, and it's ready to turn on so that we can calibrate it. But before we get on with the rest of the stove, I just want to show you the pantry very briefly. Notice that this is a blank shelf. It matches the interior of the pantry door and actually the back as well. In 1947, none of, the, none of these were enameled or painted. I assume it was a, uh, a post-war supply issue, but the first time I, I saw one, I was really confused and thought somebody made a replacement. And then you keep seeing them and you realize, oh, this is just what they did in 1947. This shelf, though, is the same, same size and everything else. And you can just see in the back the bracket that this rests on. So for the shelf, we just slide this in all the way to the back, put this down, and the front, oop, the front lip rests right on that bracket in front of the door. The back of the shelf rests on the little lip back there, and we just close the door. Now let's look at the broiler. Now setting up the broiler is very straightforward. The sizzle platter goes in first, and notice the cutouts and the legs of, uh, or the supports of the sizzle platter. They go right there. And also notice that the front of the sizzle platter fits right inside that groove in the, the broiler burner itself. And then we put the griddle on, and it has this hook in the front. And that hook in the front, so let me lower this just so you can see a little better, goes right into this support here. Now, if for any reason your griddle wobbles, these two adjustment screws, if your stove has never been restored, proceed with caution with these, they break so easily. But if your stove has been restored or you're very good with loosening rusted screws, these can be adjusted to make sure that the griddle sits nice and flat and even so that your pancake stove will end up being lopsided. So we slide that hook into that little bar or our griddle, and we are ready to cook. Now we want to take a look at how to adjust the pilots on your Model B. Now, obviously, you're going to take care of the pilots within a minute of having turned the gas on. In this video, I did the thermal well pilot before simply because um, we wanted to do the thermal well all at one time. Just made life easier for filming, but in real life, within a minute, you need to give it a few seconds for the gas to flow, but within a minute of turning the gas on, you want to take care of the thermo well pilot and the stovetop pilot. And the stovetop pilot is right underneath here, so we want to lift up one of the drip rings and stick our, our, our lighter right in there. And if we're not sure if it caught, I mean, obviously, like in person, you can bend down, you can take a look, you can see the blue flame. Since on camera, that's very hard to capture. That lights right up and we can see this is burning nice and blue. When we get to calibrating flames, this one's already all right and well, uh, and well calibrated, but we're gonna look at, at the rest and make sure they're okay too. Now, if you find that your pilots are too high these two screws back there, you see that black pipe that runs to the back? Those are the pilot adjustment screws. Now, they will very likely be very tight. I found in, in my experience that this type of pilot adjustment screw always kind of seizes. So you want to approach this with some caution. Again, on a restored stove, this is very different than on an unrestored stove. But what you want to do is take a look inside you know, stick your head in there and follow the little pilot line to either the stovetop pilot that's right here or the thermal well pilot. And then you're going to turn that screw ever so slightly. It really is a matter of minor adjustments to raise and lower the height of your pilot. Now, proper height of a pilot on a Model B should be between 3 eighths and half an inch. It's a little bit higher than the B, but I've often found that 3 eighths of an inch, which is the same as the B, will work fine. But you need to get the best results for you, but you definitely 
do not want to be over half an inch. If it is, tighten that screw a little, just turn it. And it's the same principle as every other screw, right to tight, left to loose. So left will open it up a little more, right will close it a little more, make your adjustments carefully right down there. And that's the same for every Model B, even the, even the BZ. Now, flame adjustments are something you should only do if you feel confident working with gas and getting your hands maybe just a little hot. So let me show you this without the flame on. This screw right here is what we adjust in order to raise or lower the air shutter. So if you look carefully, see how that's moving down at the bottom? The screw is either lifting that closer up to the burner or, or turning it further away. So what we want to do is, is turn the gas on and adjust the air shutter so that we're getting as much blue as possible. Now, here I'm just going to get really extreme with this for a second. Notice how the flames start floating away from the burner. That's, that indicates that there's too much air in the mix. If you have all blue, but they start floating away from the burner, there's too much air and you need to close the air shutter. Now, if you go to the other extreme and there's not enough air, not only will the burner not ignite, but you'll start to get more and more yellow and the flame starts to get out of control. Look at that, way too yellow, that's an inefficient burn. I don't mind a flash of yellow here and there, especially on these burners, they've been seasoned. So some of that Crisco is going to burn off. Same thing with something that's freshly enameled. You may very well see flashes of, of yellow or orange. That doesn't alarm me because that will go away. But what I don't want are flames floating up. I don't want flames that are too high. And I don't want ones that are constantly always yellow or primarily yellow, but a flicker here and there isn't a big deal. Once we've got something to the right height, we're going to turn the gas off. And I'm going to hold that position with my screwdriver, and then I'm going to turn that butterfly nut down so that it tightens the screw and holds that air shutter in place. Now that's locked in. No amount of wobble is going to move that. Next time that moves, there's going to be a screwdriver involved. If, for whatever reason, you find that the flames are way too high, it may be that your, uh, that your orifice cap needs adjusting. And I'm going to make a partner video to this that's going to show you how to find out which type of jet you have. The jet is what connects to the gas line and puts gas into the burner. There are three different kinds, and while I've talked about this in my conversion videos, how to pr uh, convert from propane to natural gas and so on. I haven't really spelled it out sufficiently so that people will know when they're not trying to convert, but they're just trying to, to figure out what they've got in their stove, how they can adjust the flame. If you've got a uni universal jet or a solid tip jet, and I'll put pictures of them in, in this video so that you can see what I mean, then you can adjust the height of the flame if you're using natural gas. A propane tip will have one single setting uh, in, in that cap and it can't be adjusted. So all the adjustments have to be made at the air shutter. So we want the right amount of fuel so that we can get the flames to be about a half an inch high. And we want the right color, which we adjust with the air shutter. So these are the two things, amount of fuel and amount of oxygen that make our burners go. And we do that for all four stovetop burners. So these three and the well all adjust in the exact same way. The broiler, I'll have to show you. Now the broiler burner has an air shutter that you see under the back left stovetop burner. You see that screw here? That screw is, uh, is what you adjust in order to be able to slide this plate. So once again, you're going to have the burner up lit and you're going to ever so gently slide this until you get the right mix of blue and the right height 
and uh, and not floating away from the burner, and then tighten that screw. And I always tell everyone, if you're not comfortable working with gas, don't. Get somebody who is, get somebody who knows what they're doing, but you should know what the process is. This is your stove, and even if you're getting somebody in to help you, you wanna know what the process is. There shouldn't be any mystery about the work that we do with your stove. It's incredibly tedious, but it's not a mystery. So this is where you do that. And the oven has one in the exact same spot, but in the pantry. Let's take a look at that. So to find the oven burner, we lift up the pantry door. Follow the gas line down and you see right there, there's another air shutter. Same screw, just like the broiler. There we go. And that's where you adjust it. Now, if you wanna make sure that your oven is perfectly calibrated, I have a video on how to calibrate your oven. It does focus on the later Model B thermostat and the Model C thermostat. If you have an earlier Model B, it'll be slightly different, but the process is the same, and it's gonna involve that same air shutter right down there in the pantry. One last quick thing I wanna show you about the Model B, and that's the back where the gas line attaches. So this is the manifold. This is a part of the stove. It does not come off and should not be cut. That's where you, you, know, you can attach an elbow so it points down to the flex line, down towards your shutoff valve for, your, for the gas in your kitchen. But know that your Model B can't be placed right up against the wall. Now on the one hand, you've got a cover, so you're, if you don't have a backsplash, if you just have the fin like this stove does, it needs the room for clearance to just get uh, uh, be put up in the first place. But far more importantly, I feel like this is Chambers saying, hey, leave a little bit of space between the, the stove itself and the wall behind it as an extra insulator. Air's a great insulator, it dissipates, it dissipates heat very quickly. The chimney is inside the back, and while it, no chambers has insulation in the, in the back, the way this is blowing out towards the back instead of a Model C is blowing out towards the front, I feel it's a good safety precaution to keep your Model B you know, as close to the wall as you can, but keep an allowance for this manifold and the elbow that you're going to attach for it. And don't try to stick all that in the wall. Give it the space and the breathing room it needs. Your stove and your wall will be better for it. So that's the Chambers Model B. If you have any questions or if I missed anything, please leave a comment below. Otherwise, thanks, and I'll see you next time on the Chambers Rescue Channel.